Hello all. I've had to make some forms for bent laminations recently, so I thought it a good opportunity to share with you my process. The type I'll be making has a male and a female part to make a press. I made my first forms at the tender age of 15, when apprenticing with boat builders what seems like moons ago. It's proved a useful string to the bow since. Every woodworker should try a steam bend and a bent lamination at least once, I think. Later in the video, when the forms are made, I will show you the glue up and the results. Why am I starting at the table saw then? Well, let me first say I'd rather be doing these on the bandsaw so I lose less material, but, well, mine's just not playing ball in terms of consistency at the minute. But I'm starting at the saw because I would say, for a new form, that's where it starts. You'll have, for example, a radius for your curve in mind. Mine is a fairly gentle 1010mm outside, and so I think 4mm rips will work nicely. But it needs to be checked. I don't want it needing too much force to take the curve, otherwise there'll be too much spring back when released from the form. My rips are done at 5mm, which seem to take the curve easily, so once playing to 4mm will take the curve no problem at all. Again, I'm showing this before building the form, as although I have an overall final thickness I'm aiming for, I want to check the actual final thickness once all my pieces are milled, or how it looks and flexes etc, before committing to a form. I should also mention that it's worth cutting a couple of extra rips too. Happy with my pieces, I can get to actually making the form. What I have here is a mega trammel I've made from a long rip off an MDF sheet, bolted at one end to a piece of ply, which I can butt up to an edge. If you have a large bench you don't mind putting a hole in, you could just pivot the trammel on that of course. As briefly mentioned, my external radius, what will be the bottom of the rocker, will be 1010mm. The piece I'm forming, I want 48mm thick, so the internal radius, the rocker top, is 962mm. At least, that's the final dimensions. On the faces of the male and female parts of my form, there'll be strips of 8mm bendy ply, so I have to add and take away a further 8mm to each radius respectively. Going in closer to the end of the trammel there, you can sort of see what I mean. The inside pair of holes are my actual finish dimensions. These were used to mark and cut a trial piece of ply so I could check I was happy with the rock. The two outermost holes are what I've marked on the MDF. So 1018 outside and 954 inside to allow for the bendy ply faces you'll see later. Once marked, it's over to the bandsaw to cut the pieces out. The finished form will be three stacked pieces of 18mm MDF. These first two male and female pieces will be templates for the next, so I scribble some pencil down the edge to highlight areas that need attention as I sand. Oh for a CNC for this sort of thing. The odd minor imperfection or saw mark won't make too much difference. What you're after really is just a consistent smooth run, not necessarily perfection. Happy enough with the edges, the first two pieces can serve as templates for the next. I'm being generous at this point. The side of the pencil is against the edge of the MDF, so the line I'm drawing is a couple of millimetre from the finish line. They then get cut at the bandsaw, and I can now stack the pieces. I use a couple of dogs on the bench to keep the backs flush as I screw the pieces together. These forms aren't, or don't have to be, a use once jig by the way, so you could glue and screw if you were so inclined for that extra sense of permanence. I'm just using screws at this stage though. The first two pieces that were cut, and whose edges I spent time making good, now serve as a template for the other two. On this male section, my template piece is a sandwich filling. On the female piece, I have the template piece top with the rough copies stacked below. This for no other reason than I use this opportunity to film and demonstrate router bits as part of a recent review video. Both ways work, I've no real preference. Faces of the form pieces all machine flush, I rip down some of the bendy ply to cover them. I've had remnants of this stuff sat around for years now, all left over from sheeting curved walls for a really nice plywood spiral staircase we made. Here's an old bit of phone footage I found so you can take a look. Look at that tolerance to the wall, to the millimetre. It presented a number of challenges I have to say, but the finished look was great. Tread pieces had a walnut inlay and lipped with sycamore if I remember right. Would have made an incredible YouTube video, but I always made a point of when on site for a job, I was there for the job, not YouTube. But yeah, that staircase was a highlight of this renovation. I could probably cobble together enough photos to story the build though if anyone would be interested in it. Let me know below and I'll see what I can dig out of the archives if there's any interest. Back to the task at hand then, I do a preliminary lashing of glue on the MDF face edges to seal them up a bit. The reason I'm adding the bendy ply strips by the way, is its outer layers are quite soft, has a little give in it, feels a little bit like balsa wood actually. 
Anyway, I just find laying something over the top of the form with a bit of give allows for any minor inconsistencies in the material or through movement while clamping. Cork is popular for this too. You could, in a pinch, even do two or three layers of duct tape. It'll do the same thing. I don't wait for the sealing coats to dry. I just give them five minutes to penetrate the fibres, then your actual glue layer will take. Bendy ply in place, I pin it to the MDF, making sure all the pin heads are well buried. On the male piece, I cut off the excess bendy ply flush to the back. Then on the back, I add another strip of MDF. This isn't an essential step, but the face of MDF board is far more resilient to clamp pressure than the edges which could easily be damaged and splay. A worthwhile precautionary measure as I intend to use these forms a few times. I tried to make sure the bottoms of the forms were flush as I put them together, but gave them a little sand as well just to be sure. These base pieces are 9mm ply, my final leftovers from the shipping crate of my planar thicknesser. The male form will be attached to the centre 9mm ply rip. The female piece will sit on the two other larger pieces. Pay no mind to the shape of the ply pieces, that's just the shape they were before I cut them in half. Now, arguably the worst part of making these forms, wrapping it in tape. It's just packing tape, nothing fancy and doesn't need to be. This is just one I grabbed while in WH Smith's. But yeah, it takes ages, but as you'll see, really does help at the end. I cover the whole top side and edges of the base pieces. Then the faces and leading edges of the form. Finally, I can attach the base pieces to the forms to complete the build. Just to note, I have a centre line on the male form, front and back, to help me align with the centre line on the base piece. As you can see, I set out the two side pieces either side of the centre, then lay the female piece on top. It too has a centre line to keep it in line with the centre strip. I put a little guide mark on each side so I know where to fix when I flip it upside down then attach each side with ample screws. And there is the whole jig together and finished. The centre strip of the base just helps keep things in line when applying clamping pressure. So it'd be rude not to actually show you it in use and the results then. I forgot to mention earlier that if these are on show, take care to keep your pieces in cutting order. This should keep grain flows and colour variations in check. On one of mine, I had to swap out a couple of the pieces, which will affect the look, but this being a prototype, it's not such a biggie. Also worth paying attention to what will be on these rockers, the top and bottom pieces. Get nice, clean, straight grain, or indeed the highly figured pieces you prefer for the finished look you're after. In terms of glue, I'm sure everyone on YouTube will tell you something different, but it was epoxy when I started out, and it's still epoxy for me now. It's great for rigidity. PVA based glues are fine too, in fact they might be preferable if you want your pieces with a little flex and twist. I don't, so it's epoxy. EL2 laminating resin from Easy Composites with their 8030 slow set hardener. Firstly then, slow set will obviously give you more working time. This 8030 hardener is good for an hour in the pot. This does have what for some might be a downside and that is at a balmy 25 degrees C, you're looking at a 20 to 30 hour cure time. I take mine indoors and leave them for a full 48 hours. But look, the best work takes time, that's the reality. Another reason I like the slow cure is I've always found they have next to no spring back when released from the form. Maybe with the extra time, it doesn't just rely on the glue, but actually teases the wood fibres into shape. Don't know if that's true, but it seems to make sense. As ever with epoxies, of course your ratios have got to be right, 100 to 30 in this case, so a calculator and scales are a safe bet. As is mixing well. When you think you've mixed enough, just mix for another minute or two to be sure. All being well, the pieces get a liberal wetting up. Just one side of each piece is sufficient, as long as you've given it a good coat. And, if it applies, take care to keep the order and orientation right as you go. The little spatula thing I'm using is a silicone one, perfect for the task on these size pieces. £2.50 from any good kitchenware shop. I'm sorry, this isn't the best shot, but all I'm doing here is lining the pieces up. They're about 50mm longer than they need to be each end. I have the approximate finish length marked on the form you can just see there. I'm just making sure those marks fall well within my lamination. Not strictly necessary if your lamination is over length, but little things like this help with consistency and reduce mistakes. Then it's clamp time. One of these quick clamps will put it right in on its own, which is a good sign. But I keep adding ones to the side as I go to keep things even. You may need to tap the odd piece flat in relation to the others as you go. Just keep an eye on it. 
That's it clamped and now off to reside in the spare room for a couple of days. Far too cold in the workshop currently. A couple of days later, I can pop the clamps off and see how it's fared. A little gentle persuasion with a rubber mallet and it comes apart nicely. This is why you take the trouble with all the packing tape. So I'm pretty happy with that. Quick clean up on each side through the planar thicknesser. I don't know if any of you guys do like I do, but I have a couple of households who keep animals I give my bags of planar chippings to. Do remember that if you clean up epoxy on a planer, you've contaminated the bag of chippings. Don't let it go to the animals, it's not good for the poor souls. Taking care to keep them flat on glue up, a half millimetre pass on each side clean them right up. Here's the result on the good rocker then. You can see the original grain and colour graduation flowing in this poplar. Very light woods like this, or my favoured white beech, are extremely unforgiving with glue lines. There's simply nowhere to hide. Darker woods do you many more favours in that respect, but I'm happy with these results nonetheless. On the bad rocker, so to speak, you could hopefully make out where my having to swap out a couple of pieces has thrown the flow of the grain out slightly. This for me would be a reject on a saleable item, but for purposes of prototype, it will still be used. And here's why I take all the little steps I do with my forms. All the markings and taking time with it, etc. The two rockers are exactly the same, like I've cut them from one larger piece. What they're actually for, you'll have to wait for the new year to find out. But I hope this walkthrough of building the form has been of some use or interest for you. I know there was a lot to say and take in in this video, but I hope I've got across that little patience and good preparation with your forms can give you really nice, repeatable results. Once you've mastered the straight line and the curve in wood, the only limit is your imagination. So comments and questions as always welcome below. I do try and get to answering them all. A like would be appreciated if you did. A sub would be grand if you haven't already. There's also a thanks button below if any of you would like to support in that way. And thanks so much to those of you who've done so on previous videos by the way. But that about sums it up I think. So as always if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.